G'day guys and gal. The Horus Heresy was a bit uh, controversial. It had people divided like nothing we've seen since Elon Musk bought Twitter. Brother against brother, oaths made and broken, even father versus son. As a lot of us know, there were thousands of Astartes from the Traitor Legions who didn't want to join Chaos. We also know that almost all of them were massacred on Istvan after putting up the mother of all our stands. But the Istvan atrocity only involved the sons of Horus, Emperor's Children, World Eaters, and Death Guard. Only those legions performed the one-third purge on that blighted world. So what happened to the loyalists from the Night Lords? Thousand Sons, Iron Warriors, Alpha Legion, what happened to the Were Bearers? After all, up until just before the heresy began, the Were Bearers saw the Emperor as a god. Surely Lorgar wasn't able to convert 100% of them out of that belief in a few short years. Judging by the ratio of the other Traitor Legion's loyalist elements, it seems like there should be around like 100,000 loyalist Astartes from the Traitor Legions that are completely unaccounted for. Before we get started, I have some exciting news. It is time for the November Surfshark Sponsorship. Kawabunga it is. What is it, why do you need it, and what spicy deal have I managed to cook up for you today? Surfshark VPN is a bit self-explanatory. It's a software VPN that gives you access to, in my biased opinion, the easiest to use, most reliable, and effective VPN on the market. The primary reason why you would need this is because life isn't fair. Different countries have different licensing deals for streaming services, different levels of access to certain websites, or different pricing. By using a VPN, you can place yourself in those countries to get access to all those goodies that your country's internet would usually allow. I personally use Surfshark to blow up my pathetic Netflix library, since Australia eats shit when it comes to these kind of things. VPNs also provide you with security and IP masking for when you want to look up some shady stuff. But for me, it's all about the licensing. To add the cherry on the top, by using my linking code MAGICAL below, you'll get 85% off and three months free. As always, if you are somehow unsatisfied with your purchase, then Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee. Cheers to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Today we'll go over what happened to the loyalist elements from the Traitor Legions not present on Isvan, detailing how they performed their own in Legion purge, the law surrounding the Astartes that didn't get the memo that their Legion was now a traitor, as well as the survivors of Istvan who went on to accomplish amazing things. Uh, let's get into it. <laughs> Although I said there should be around 100,000 loyalist Astartes from the Traitor Legions that weren't on Istvan, if we were to take the one-third multiply from the Istvan Legions and apply it to the others, but the reality isn't quite so clean-cut. It wasn't an accident that the Death Guard, Emperor's Children, World Eaters, and Sons of Horus performed their purge on Istvan. These legions were specifically chosen as they had the largest amounts of potential loyalists within them. Their method of recruiting, battle doctrine, and culture all aligned with the Imperium and the Emperor's ideals. Even the World Eaters to an extent, as many of them saw the Emperor as the ultimate warrior, hence revered him greatly. Contrast this with the Night Lords, who were already in exile, twisted, hated the Imperium and were full of criminals, or the Alpha Legion, who were performing so much 4D chess that the loyalist elements of it thought that they were only pretending to be traded to help the loyalists, which may or may not have been the case, hard to say. The Iron Warriors were a bitter legion, resentful towards the Imperium due to them always being thrown in the most grueling war zones without thanks or praise. They were jealous of the Emperor's favoritism to towards the Imperial Fist, despite them believing themselves to be superior. Perturabo, and by his extension his legion, were also worried that the Emperor would disband them for their brutal genocide of their own home planet of Olympia. So there didn't really need to be a mass purge, as most of the Iron Warriors were pretty on board with it, and those that weren't were easily and privately decimated. However, despite this, loyalist Iron Warriors contributed a shitload towards saving mankind's soul. On the planet of Paramar, the Alpha Legion attacked to try quickly take the world. However, a loyalist contingent of Iron Warriors who hadn't been informed of the heresy came to its aid, fought off the Alpha Legion and dug in. At this point, the Alpha Legion were trying to prove themselves to the traitor's cause, so they went balls to the walls of the invasion, slowly, bloodily, but surely pushing the Iron Warriors back and killing them. Only as the final bastion fell did the Iron Warrior commander say, suck my fucking nuts, and detonated bombs that were planted throughout the fortress, killing a shitload of Alpha Boys and denying them a clean victory. Funnily enough, the Iron Warrior commander survived due to his Terminator armor, but this does show how a bit of carelessness by the Traitor Legions not accounting for all their troops cost them quite dearly. This wasn't a one-off either. There were numerous warsmiths located throughout the galaxy that weren't a part of the initial heresy. Some declared for Horus, but many stayed true to the Emperor. 
creating pockets of difficult resistance for the traders. The most famous of these was Barbaros Dantioch, who outplayed Perturabo, escaped his world, came to Ultramar, figured out how to use a Xeno device which saved Gilliman, the Lion, Alexis Pollux, and more or less the Imperium, before he finally fell in glorious combat. He was one of the most impactful characters in the setting, saving the Imperium through his actions. Loyalist Iron Warriors were fucking badass. If only Perturabo had stayed loyal, Horus wouldn't have even seen the solar system. How about the Night Lords? Did they even have Loyalists? Yes, but not many. The original Night Lords were these special children taken from the darkest depths of terror. Silent, terrifying, but mature and dutiful. The Night Lords taken from Nostromo were fucking nuts. Murderers, rapists, and just all round shit blokes. See, Nostromo recruited its strongest into the Legion, and the strongest were always criminals. So as the Terranborn Night Lords slowly died off during the Great Crusade, and were replaced by the Nostromans, the culture of the Legion became toxic, with even Conrad hating most of his sons by the time the heresy came about. Either way, the Night Lords didn't give a fuck about the Emperor or the Imperium. They were already in exile after Conrad attacked Dawn, and probably felt like rebels regardless. As such, although there was a handful of loyalist Night Lords, such as the Librarian, Fel Zarost, and another called Kasati Nuon, fuck me, they didn't seem to unite as a force and provide any kind of challenge against the traitors like the Iron Warriors did. Perhaps some of the Terranborn Night Lords were able to slip away, becoming Black Shields, which were Astartes that had renounced their legion and joined the other side. There were some confirmed Night Lord Black Shields that survived the entire heresy, but once again, pretty much just a footnote. The Thousand Sons didn't really have the opportunity to have a loyalist element, as the Space Wolves kind of raped them during the burning of Prospero, leaving only around 1,000 of them alive, all of whom hated the Imperium because, you know, their world was just burned by them. However, there are two Loyalist Thousand Sons I'd like to talk about, Revul Avida and Motep. Revul, I'm just going to call him Rev because fuck that, was not present on Prospero during its burning, and he wasn't really sure what happened when he came later. He encountered the White Scars, helped Jagadai, and returned to Terra, where he suffered the flesh change and was becoming a Chaos Spawn, likely due to Titsnitch directly killing the Thousand Sons not bound to him. Malkador and Jagadai merge Rev with the Noble Shard of Magnus, creating Janus, a legendary Psyche warrior who would go on to become the first Grandmaster of the Grey Knights. Not fucking bad for a dude from a traitor legion. Motep was likewise separated from his legion when shit hit the fan, finding himself in a desperate struggle against the traitor word bearers as he teamed up with a small contingent of loyalist world eaters, ultramarines, and space wolves. He was a massive asset, using his psychic powers to save his loyal comrades on multiple occasions. His actions directly stopped the word bearers from destroying McCrag and dooming the ultramarine legion, eventually giving his life to banish a hectic demon. Just these 2,000 Sun Loyalists did so much for the Imperium that had failed them. Rest easy, Space Wizards. The issue with Wordbearer Loyalists is that Lorga was extremely convincing and charismatic. One of his Primarch powers was his ability to inspire absolute loyalty and devotion from his own Astartes. Did you know that the original Terranborn Wordbearers were trained and tasked with spreading the Imperial Truth? atheism across the galaxy, yet Lorgar was able to twist their task into spreading religious dogma about the Emperor without too much issue. So it's no surprise that Lorgar was then able to convince them to follow his lead and worship the Chaos Gods. A good in law example of this is when the Wordbearers attacked and subjugated a human world, which turned out to worship the Emperor as a god. One of the Wordbearer captains, who doesn't yet know Lorgar had drunk the Chaos Kool-Aid, was shocked and appalled that they had just attacked a world that was already following their beliefs. When he told Lorgar, Lorgar was able to convince him within like three minutes that the old ways of the Emperor's godhood were wrong, and that their beliefs needed to change. It was extremely intense. The Astartes was barely able to look at his Primarch during the conversation, and he felt like Lorgar was going to murder his ass until he accepted his words. Then suddenly Lorgar was back to being his loving father. It really shows how much the Wordbearers venerated Lorgar as more than just a mentor and a father. To them, he was like a genuine demigod. As such, very few of them were able to resist joining his heresy, especially after the Emperor just mind raped them at Monarchia. The ones that did resist or voice dissent were quietly killed over time. The word bearers were traders years before everyone else, so they were able to take their time. In saying that though, there are two key loyalist word bearers who did make quite the impression. First is the Anchorite, a word bearer who did originally drink the Kool-Aid, fighting on Isvan in the Battle of Kalth, under the traders banner. However, during the Battle of Kalth, he was like, wait a fucking minute. Chaos sucks dick! And then he surrendered to the Ultramarines who imprisoned him. While in jail, he repented his sins and accepted the Emperor's light back into his soul. Demons tried to tempt him back to Chaos, but he told them to eat his shit and he banished them with his faith. 
He would go on to survive the heresy still in his cell, but he felt really bad about the whole unleashing demons upon the universe situation. He tried to kill himself, like a lot, eventually needing to be put in a dreadnought to keep him alive after his self neck attempts. He would then go on to help found the Ecclesiarchy, passing his teachings and knowledge to Imperials in secret that would create the foundations of the Imperial cult. However, he remained imprisoned, more by his own choice than anything else. Funnily enough, when some Chaos were bearers caught wind of where he was in the 41st millennium, so like 10,000 years later, they tried to free him and take him with them, but he just beat the shit out of them, banished their demonic allies with his faith, and then returned to his cell where he still remains. Fucking Chad. The other loyalist word bearer is Bathusa Nisik, who also started off fighting alongside the traitors, but was like, you know what? Fuck Lorga, that bitch. And he worked with Eldred to take up the Cabal, and then he attempted to murder Lorga. He was as chaotic as a dude can get without actually joining Chaos. Dude woke up and chose violence. What about the Alpha Legion? After all, Alpharis literally said, everything I do, I do now for the Emperor as he joined the traitor's cause. You can imagine how fucking hard this makes my job when Alpharius considers himself loyalist as he tries to bring down his father's empire. I actually made an entire video on this that I consider to be one of my better ones because my brain almost exploded. But my take is that Alpharius' arrogance meant that he thought he knew the Emperor's will when he actually didn't, making him a genuine traitor. Amegan, on the other hand, couldn't oppose Alpharius openly, but didn't want to go down the traitor path. As such, the Alpha Legion as a whole were told that they were now traitor to the Emperor, with some loyalist elements being purged in super secret Alpha Legion wars. These loyalists were the ones who, who weren't subtle enough to be useful to Amegon. Hence a small but influential group of Alpha Legionnaires went into deep cover, subtly helping the loyalists or sabotaging the traitors at the direction of Amegon. This is why the Alpha Legion would randomly do shit that seemed stupid or ended up helping the loyalists, such as blockading and antagonizing the White Scars, which pushed Jagadai to the loyalist cause. But overall, it's very confusing as it seems like different Black Library authors have different opinions on the Alpha Legion's loyalty status, creating a shitload of contradictions that are really hard to piece together. So that is what happened to the loyalist elements from the Traitor Legions who weren't involved in the Isfan atrocity. But what about the Astartes who were involved, yet survived? Like Garviel Loken or Nathaniel Garo? Well, both of these guys went through absolute fucking hell and back, literally. Loken was so traumatized that he lost his memory and spent ages fighting zombies in a manic state, while Garo literally dragged his ass through hell to deliver a warning about Horus's betrayal. Malkador took a special interest in loyalists from traitor legions, seeing them as having the strength and will to oppose their own Primarchs and survive. As such, he began recruiting them into his own elite order of the Knights Errant. These included space marines from almost every legion, including the Night Lords, World Eaters, Emperor's Children, Sons of Horus, and Death Guard. There were other loyalists from traitor legions that became the founding members of the Grey Knights, the most loyal and trusted Astartes in the Imperium. It goes to the show that Gene Seed is not inherently traitor or loyal, it's the man they put it in. So yeah, those surviving loyalists from the traitor legions climbed high, becoming the most prized and valued servants of Malkador as either his personal agents or as the galaxy's first demon hunters. Hell yeah, dude. If you enjoy the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be, where there is not only a bunch of smexy nude cosplay, but also a boatload of Battle Mace 40 million hentai. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more loyal content. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.